So I decided to try out the um, Overwatch beta. I wouldn't say I was like completely pessimistic on the game, but I'm kind of used to shooters sort of, uh, I don't want to say run in the middle, but they, they don't really seem to have a lot of longevity. I, I never really typically liked Call of Duties or anything to that sense. I did like Halo. I did play that a lot. And with Halo 5 being a huge disappointment for me, I was definitely looking for a new shooter to sort of fit that, um, you know, that missing link that I have. I was originally going to think it was going to be Doom, because I had high hopes for that, and apparently it's not as good as I would have hoped. So, with that being said, here's uh, Overwatch, and I've only played the beta, obviously that's the only thing out right now, and from playing that, I got a good idea of what direction this game's going in. Um, you get to pick from a few different heroes, if you don't know what Overwatch is, you get to pick from a few different heroes, and it's mostly objective-based. Uh, game modes right now. I haven't seen any team deathmatch. There's mostly like you fight over an objective and then you go to the next one and you kind of like push the other team into a corner and there's also payload. Uh, with the objective one I find kind of interesting because once you get an objective, like let's say you get objective A, you automatically have to go for B and they can't reclaim A. Um, so that's an interesting one. There's also one where it's like a percentage thing, like a king of the hill. So whoever had that territory the longest wins the match. So those are the two um, territory-like ones. The payload one's pretty self-explanatory. You have to stop them from getting um, a certain thing, like a, a truck in most cases, to the end of the level. Uh, that one's pretty okay. I, I think, or at least I hope in the final game, you could pick which modes you want to play in. As of right now, you just kind of put through the ones at random. That's kind of annoying because I don't really like Palo too much. I mean, it's okay, but I'm more of a fan of the objective ones, uh, mainly because they go by quicker. Sometimes overload could take 20 minutes. It's kind of drawn out. So I'd rather just have like quick mo games and be done with it. The map variety um, is great. I have not played the same map twice, and I played the game for about six, six hours at least. And I mean, I did play some maps over, but like the amount of time in between them was very long. I guess also you could count the fact that the random game modes are coming in as well. I didn't really get an exact count on how many maps per game mode there is, but I didn't feel like it was um, lacking in variety. I remember when I played Halo 5, I felt like I played the same map like every match. Um, this is really great map variety, and also the layout of the maps are great. It actually best suits each character because some characters can like climb walls some can grappling hook um to get to higher points so you always have to look up like snipers actually are pretty useful in this game that's another thing a lot of shooters i always notice that snipers were not as useful like you could just shoot a pistol across the map um but this one they actually have some you know a purpose which is great um the weapon variety i mean based on all the heroes it's really interesting like when you pick a certain hero, you have to play a certain way. Um, so you can't just like automatically know how everyone plays. You do have to spend a little time with them. And that's also really interesting because there is a decent amount and they plan to add more later on. And apparently it's going to be free. So um, like Hanzo, he shoots arrows, but they have like an arrow drop sort of mechanic. Um, and also how, how long you charge the arrows, how much damage you do. Uh, the character I like to play the most is Genji. He has... Um, Drawing stars, uh, you could do two different types of throws. You could draw them all in a straight line, or you could draw them spread out. Um, he also deflects bullets with his sword, and he could also, like, dash forward and slash with the sword. Pretty cool character, but, like, knowing when to use the abilities and everything else is very vital for every character. Um, you also see later that I play as a healer um, who shoots orbs to heal people or add damage, which is really interesting as well. Um, as far as the gameplay, I would say the gameplay is really solid, um, really fun. Uh, there are varying difficulties for each character, like Genji is a three-star difficulty, but then there's also characters that um, that are a little easier to pick up, like one star. And I, I feel like that's not a very good difficulty rating system because I don't understand it. Um, maybe it's just I pick, I picked up on different characters differently, but. Um, 
I, I think that's all just play preference. I don't think that you should really go based on the difficulties with um with that. So I think that's a little off. I think they should do some work on explaining the play types a little bit more. I mean, they do explain what their abilities do, which is good, but they don't necessarily, um, I guess, perfectly represent the difficulty of each character. Uh, there's also a lot of unlocks you could get skins, which is cool. Uh, the one thing I'm disappointed with is that, like, I would say 70% of the skins for each character is mostly just a palette swap of the first one. That's kind of cool because for Genji, there is a, a palette swap that I really want. Um, mainly because I don't like his main colors too much. It's just white and green. It's kind of boring. So in some ways, that's good. But I would have liked to see a little more skins. And also with those skins, like the total variants, I would also like to see some more palette swaps on those as well. Uh, my friend made a good point. He said it would have been better if they made palette swaps for each skin. That would have been good, more like a Street Fighter style. I, I can understand that. That makes perfect sense. Um, you also can unlock little silly things as well, like sprays where you can spray paint on the wall and different uh, gestures. And like when you get the highlight of the game here, you can have a different pose for it. Another cool thing about highlights is that if you didn't record all your gameplay, you can go into the main menu and they actually have a highlight of the last five matches you had, like your best moments of that match, and they give you a little highlight for that. So that's pretty cool that they did that. Um, overall, I'm actually really impressed with this game, and originally I wasn't going to buy it. Um, I was going to pass on it, but after playing the beta, and I mean this is pretty much the final game, I mean the game comes out in like 20 days, so... We already know that this is basically it. And with that being said, I was pleasantly surprised. Uh, I had a lot of fun with Genji. I thought I was going to be more of a Reaper fan, but Genji is just awesome. And as far as a healer, I wasn't sure if I was actually going to play one or not. But um, what's his name? Zenyatta, I think. He's awesome. That's the one I'm playing with now. And with that, I'm going to end the review here. I'm going to give this game, just from the beta, I don't know. I guess an 8. 8 out of 10. It's a really good game. Really fun. And thanks for watching. And with that, I will leave you with the rest of this clip.